Uh, thank you. My name is uh, Sam Yale. Pronouns are he, him. And uh, I am a 46-year-old Asian male with uh, black hair, brown eyes. My eyes are closed. I'm clean shaven. Uh, I'm wearing a long sleeve button down shirt, which uh, says level access on it. And uh, uh, my background on Zoom is a uh, Braille page. So uh, it looks like I'm coming out of the Braille dots on a page. And so today I'm going to talk to you about the experience of uh, understanding images using a screen reader uh, for people with visual and cognitive disabilities. So the uh, web, as, as Brendan had mentioned, uh, there's no better time for web accessibility than now. It certainly received a lot more visibility uh, among organizations, among uh, tech companies in the media and the press. There have been a lot of complaints and legal action around web accessibility. And the world is becoming more and more visual as bandwidth increases, as people have uh, access to um, higher speeds of, of internet and are able to uh, access and post images and videos. Uh, we know that the world loves visual imagery, photos, memes, emojis, video clips. And this is increasingly leaving the uh, blind and visually impaired community behind as more information is represented visually in picture and, and video form. And so I'm really happy that the IPTC has uh, taken on the initiative to address this and make this part of the metadata standard and is really sending a message to industry and to the world and to the media that alternative text and uh, making images accessible to those with visual and cognitive disabilities is not optional. Uh, it really is something that needs to be done uh, as a requirement um, as uh, David had mentioned, and I'm glad that he clarified the difference between alternative text and captions, uh, where captions really are meant to uh, enhance a, an image and provide context for somebody who can see the image, whereas alternative text is really meant to help somebody understand the image if they are not able to perceive the image at all. And so we're going to look at several different examples of images today and uh, alternative text in different contexts, and we're going to see some image descriptions that range from very bad to very detailed. And so uh, we're going to go along this journey in looking at uh, and evaluating images in different contexts. Um, as David had mentioned, uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines requires that there be uh, any type of, uh, anytime you have a non-text element, such as an image or something that's not represented in text, that you need to have text alternatives uh, for those um, non-text items, such as photos, images, videos, etc. And uh, so in uh, the HTML specification and other specifications that are used to uh, develop web technologies, um, there is a way to provide alternative text for images. So right now, um, you can specify uh, a short or a terse description for an image and supply that in the alternative text. And then that will be announced by the screen reader when the screen reader encounters the image. Uh, but there isn't the uh, long description that kind of went away in uh, HTML4. There really isn't a good way to provide extended descriptions for images in terms of a specification or a standard. So I'm really glad that IPTC is addressing that. Um, so let's take a look at some examples of images and, and the context and how they're used. So the first example we're going to look at is where an image is used more for a functional purpose to complete a task. So it's not used as much to uh, for entertainment or to convey information, but it really is used more and it's necessary to actually operate and interact with the website. So a few weeks ago uh, in my county, the uh, Chamber of Commerce had a restaurant week and uh, I enjoy the restaurant weeks because it gives me an opportunity to uh, find out about new restaurants in my uh, city and my neighborhood and uh, try out the specials and um, learn more about what's going on in, in my area. But uh, when I tried to review the uh, restaurants that were available and participating in the restaurant week, I was met with a barrier that prevented me from uh, identifying the restaurant. So the first example that we're going to review is when an image is used uh, at, to identify something, in this case, to identify a link or to label a control. And so because the image is necessary to actually operate and understand the website, this prevented me from being able to fully use the website. So the first example we are going to uh, review is how an image 
is used to uh, identify or label a control. So uh, Caroline, if you want to cue that up. Let's take a look at what happens when an image is used as the sole method to identify a link or other control. My local chamber of commerce recently had a restaurant week and I wanted to know what restaurants were participating and what specials were on their menus. So I'm going to press the letter H on this page to navigate to the headings on the page until I reach the heading for participating restaurants. Restaurant Champion Heading Level 2. Restaurant Supporters Heading Level 2. 2021 Participating Restaurants Heading Level 2. And here I am. Now what I'm going to do is navigate through the list of all of these restaurants and there will be two links for each restaurant. There will be a link for the web page for the restaurant and then a link for the menu. And let's see what we hear. Link graphic picture. Menu link. Picture link graphic. Lunch menu link. Dinner menu link. Takeout menu link. Picture link graphic. 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 Menu link. So it was impossible to tell the names of the participating restaurants and the menus for those restaurants without following the links because from the link information, it was not possible to identify the restaurant name or which menu would be shown without actually following the link. Let's take a look. All right, so I want to just uh, briefly break down what happened in that example since uh, what you heard didn't completely match what you saw on the screen. So what was happening was that there was a link, as I mentioned in the video, for the restaurant itself, which took you to the web page for the restaurant. And that link was labeled by an image, uh, which I'm assuming was the logo for the restaurant or the name of the restaurant. But what was, uh, there was alternative text supplied uh, for those images in this case, but the alternative text for every image said picture. So because the alternative text said picture, that made it impossible for me to identify the name of the restaurant. And since all of the links said menu or lunch menu or dinner menu, and they didn't include the name of the restaurant in the link, I couldn't even tell if I were to bring up the menu, uh, which restaurant I would be bringing up a menu for unless I actually followed that link. So you can see how critical in this example it is that you actually have good names uh, or good alternative text for images, because if I had been able to identify the restaurant names, then I at least could have been able to tell from by proximity uh, which menu I was bringing up because it would the link would have, for the menu would have been next to the uh, link for the restaurant itself. So that was an example where it took me a very long time to figure out which restaurants were participating in restaurant week and which menus went with each restaurant. So that's an example of a bad alternative text and where alternative text is really critical to being able to use and operate the website. So the next example we're going to look at is uh, the use of artificial intelligence to label images. Now, in this example, we actually have a hybrid because we're going to be looking at a social media site, uh, specifically Instagram. And on Instagram, uh, you actually can write your own alternative text. So we will see some examples where uh, people have written alternative text for their images and the photos are very well described. And then we will see some examples where individuals have not written any alternative text for their images. And so Instagram actually uses artificial intelligence to try to identify items in the photo and present those as the alternative text to the screen reader. So now we're going to take a look at an example of an Instagram newsfeed. Artificial intelligence is starting to be used to describe images, especially on social media sites where thousands of images are posted every day without any alternative text. Artificial intelligence can only determine some very basic things about images. One company that is using artificial intelligence to describe images is Facebook. Let's take a look at Instagram and we can see the difference between photos 
which are described by a human and photos that are described using artificial intelligence. Link on in house. More options button. Karen eating Indian street food dish called Sebpuri. The dish is served on a plate that resembles a street cart with four wheels on two axles and a flat plate on top. Kieran standing in front of a row of seats wearing an ethnic Indian outfit paired with blue jeans. He has an orange knee-length full sleeve long kurtha and also has a sleeveless gold color vest. Now those descriptions that you're hearing, obviously you can't see them on the screen. So somebody is writing out alternative text for these photos that they're posting. I do follow blind Instagrammers, so it would make sense that they would write alternative text. And now we will see an image that was described using artificial intelligence, and we'll notice how much less detail is contained in that description that is read by the screen reader. Photo by Eric Joel on October 23rd, 2021. Maybe an image of indoor. Button. Add a post Joy King. Link Joy King sings. More option. List of photo by Joy King on October 29th, 2021. Maybe a Twitter screenshot of one person. Photo by Hatnam Lee Black Sun with rays on October 30th, 2021. Maybe an image of two people. Fire and indoor. So you can definitely hear the difference between descriptions which are generated by a machine and descriptions which are written by a human and why the human written description is always preferred. So that gives us an example of what it sounds like to have artificial intelligence uh, attempt to describe images. And clearly it has a long way to go, uh, but there are companies that are leveraging this technology. Several companies, including Microsoft, Google, and Facebook uh, have harnessed artificial intelligence to try to identify images and uh, identify items within the images and serve those up as the alternative text. And the screen readers are even um, leveraging these services because they are free. And uh, the screen reader manufacturers realizing uh, what's the next frontier of uh, areas of the web that are inaccessible to the blind and visually impaired. And clearly images is a big part of that because uh, screen readers are not able to interpret images. So many of the screen readers are uh, harnessing the um, artificial intelligence from Microsoft and Google and making those available in their products so that you can actually send, submit those images and it will return those descriptions. But as you can hear, they are uh, severely lacking in terms of really understanding what the purpose of the photo is and, and what was meant to be gotten out of the photo. So now we're going to be moving towards uh, better examples of alternative text. And so one example I'd like to show you is a stock photo gallery. Uh, photo galleries are very popular, very common, a uh, good way to, to grab a photo if you need a particular image. Unfortunately, many uh, photo galleries such as uh, Getty Images and some of the other ones, uh, many people do not write alternative text uh, for their photos that they make available. But I did happen to find one photo gallery that did have a lot of good alternative text. So we will take a look at that now. Now let's see if I can use descriptions of images to obtain an image for my use. So I'm going to browse a photo gallery and see if I can select an image of interest. The Disability Collection is a photo collection on Getty Images, which was developed in partnership with Verizon, the National Disability Leadership Alliance, and Getty Images. There are 3,478 photos, so we have plenty of choices. Let's review what some of them are. Side view of young disabled freelance worker using computer at desk and room dash disability collection stock pictures. Happy mother playing with Down syndrome son outdoors and garden dash disability collection stock pictures. Business woman in wheelchair working at desk dash disability collection stock pictures. And again, of course, you're not seeing this text on the screen. You are just seeing the photos. And so what you're hearing being read by the screen reader is somebody writing a description of all of these photos, which is contained in the alternative text. Smiling man in wheelchair having face licked by dog while hanging out in kitchen dash disability collection stock pictures, giving the plants a drink dash disability collection stock pictures. Wow, those were great. Yeah, that really was a, a great photo gallery. It's uh, 
very hard to uh, find photo galleries with alternative text and uh, just knowing that anytime I need a picture of somebody with a disability uh, that I can go to that fo photo gallery and uh, out of a choice of over 3,400 images, find an image that would suit my purposes and actually find it independently, know what's in the image and download it is uh, fantastic. So I'm really glad that um, the disability collection exists. And um, so now we're going to look at another uh, context where uh, images are uh, described and alternative text is provided for images. And that's in the context of news, uh, news site or news feed. And uh, images, of course, are used a lot in the media, images and videos. And so uh, there is the issue of how do we make that media accessible uh, to everyone? And so in the context of news, uh, there are certainly a lot of different areas where uh, images and videos can be used, but certainly uh, on headline pages and news feeds, uh, there usually is some sort of a thumbnail that goes with a headline article. And of course, um, if you don't have the images associated with those headlines described, then you lose a lot of the context of the headlines and all you get are the words, which of course is only half the experience of uh, what every, everybody else gets. So we're going to look at one news source that is actually doing it right and providing alternative text for the images on their uh, headline page. So we're going to look at that now. Of course, it's important to stay abreast of the latest in news developments. And technology makes it possible to be able to read the news online without having to be able to read print. So I'm going to go to a great news site, Disability Scoop, and check out some of the latest headlines on there. With news media, so much of the news includes graphics and images, either in the headlines or in other parts of the news. And so having good alternative text, even on the headlines page, is very important. So we'll take a look at what good alternative text for headline news feeds looks like. President Joe Biden at podium link graphic. Heading level 2 link Biden pushes for largest boost ever to community-based services. Link graphic police at Costco store. Parents of man with a disability fatally shot in Costco to get $17 million heading level 2 link. Money link graphic. Heading level 2 link study colon families of children with special needs see 18 k dollar in lost income annually. Woman in wheelchair on sidewalk link graphic. Heading level 2 link reluctant localities are being dragged into court to fix sidewalks for people with disabilities. A healthcare provider places a bandage on a child link graphic. Heading level 2 link kids apostrophe medical records may hold clues to autism screening. Guests walk past Cinderella Castle link graphic. Heading level 2 link Disney implementing changes to disability access at theme parks. Worker at sheltered workshop link graphic. Heading level 2 link federal jobs program moves to end subminimum wage. So you, you can hear how uh, part of the headline would have been lost without those um, image descriptions because all I would have gotten was the headline text, but clearly uh, they were actually able to obtain some photos that were uh, about the news story or uh, you know took place during the news story. And so I'm sure it made the uh, article or the headline much more enjoyable to review visually. And so I'm really glad that Disability Scoop uh, provided the alternative text to uh, inform me as to what was being shown for the photos associated with each headline. And so, so now we're going to look at one final example. And this example is also a uh, news example, but it is a photo collage of the uh, year in review for 2020, uh, which was put out by WGBH in Boston. And so now we're going to look at a technique called uh, audio description. Now, audio description was a technique that was uh, invented for um, entertainment, media, museums, etc. cetera. Uh, but WGBH, who uh, pioneered, audio, pioneered audio description on television, um, has used this technique to describe images. And this will kind of give you an idea of what kind of information you could put in the extended description, accessibility extended description um, metadata field uh, that just got released. So if you are using images more for entertainment or illustrative purposes, where uh, you really want people to uh, understand the details of the image and um, understanding the details is important, necessary, or simply lends to uh, better 
experiencing and appreciating the uh, the experience of, of um, reviewing that website, then adding that information into the extended description uh, field will really make the uh, experience more enjoyable. So we're going to take a look at how audio description or extended description can also be used to provide more detailed, vivid, vivid information about an image. Another technique that can be used to describe images is called audio description. This is a technique that was invented for media, such as film, television, museums, theater, and art galleries and museums. Audio description can also be used to provide a more extended or detailed description of an image. This would be more for situations such as entertainment purposes rather than for functional purposes. Public broadcaster WGBH each year puts out a portrait of images reflecting the key events of the year. And the media access group at WGBH who pioneered audio description on television provides audio description for each of these images. Let's look at how a combination of alternative text being read by a screen reader to provide us with a succinct terse description of the image can be combined with audio description to give us a very vivid experience enjoying and appreciating these images the same way that somebody would looking at them. Dr. John Santiago stands outside of a hospital. Graphic. Play descriptive audio button. The year in portrait. In a hospital parking lot, a young doctor stands in front of an ambulance. His head and face are clean shaven and he wears blue scrubs with a stethoscope around his neck. With his arms crossed against his chest, he levels a serious gaze. Elijah and Elizabeth leaning against a car. Graphic. Play descriptive audio button. Outside of an apartment building, a young white couple wearing face masks leans against a parked car in the driveway. One, with short curly hair and red glasses, grips a metal cane, while the other, a woman with long blonde hair, keeps her hands in her overall pockets. And there you have it. There is a portrait of the year 2020, at least in Massachusetts. So of course, uh, those were fun because the uh, descriptions were um, actually read by a, uh, a human uh, describer, uh, most likely a professional actor. Now, of course, um, not everybody has the budget or the time or the technology to uh, record the audio descriptions in that fashion, but certainly that information could be uh, embedded in the extended, uh, accessibly extended description uh, metadata fields. Um, so you could still serve that up in the image. And so I hope this uh, presentation has given you some examples and some understandings of how uh, images can be described and made accessible to people with visual and cognitive disabilities. And uh, hopefully uh, the two things that you'll take away from this are that number one, uh, the quality of the alternative uh, is very important. And uh, what should be described in the image is often determined by the context in which the image is used and what uh, viewers or individuals uh, need to get out from that image uh, in terms of how it's used on, on the page. So having gone through all the examples, I'd like to now open it up for any questions about uh, describing images and uh, making them available to uh, screen reader users. That was fantastic. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Carolyn speaking here. I just wanted to read um, a quick comment um, in the chat box from Bill Kasdorf. Um, he says, a best practice for putting an extended description in HTML or EPUB is to use the details element in figure. Um, and I was curious, Sam, if maybe you could speak more about that and talk about what the experience is like when you don't use audio description um, for extended description and instead use um, extended description in HTML like Bill is referring to here. Yeah, that was, uh, that, that, I'm sorry, I think I'm unmuted now. Um, that was that was a very good point, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, he brought that up. Uh, in terms of, I don't want to get too technical in, in this session, but in terms of the details element, I think um, the level of support for that uh, varies between screen readers and uh, technologies uh, platforms. So you may need to do some additional association uh, to get the screen reader to actually read the extended description, but uh, there certainly are techniques available uh, to make extended descriptions available. And um, 
there are there are different ways that that you would do that. So um, details is, cer is certainly one way to do it. Fantastic. And Bradley Botkin wrote, um, the advantage of using extended descriptions as text rather than descriptive audio track is the searchability of the text, which is a really great point. And then um, next we have a question from um, Denise. Um, said, thanks for the presentation. I'd like to know how different is the description for children? Do you have experience with this? Can you talk a little bit more about it? Yeah, I, I think I think most of the um, experience really comes in, in play of media in terms of like building web pages for children and, and des describing describing images uh, for um, the news or, you know, other types of uh, media. Uh, that are geared towards children. I, I don't know how much evidence or uh, information there is on that, but certainly in the uh, the media space, like television and stuff like that. One thing I noticed in terms of uh, audio descriptions that were written for children is that the words were certainly a lot simpler. The vocabulary was a lot simpler. And uh, one key thing about audio description is to not uh, reveal uh, anything that uh, may not have been shown visually. So. Um, I remember watching an episode of uh, Bubble Guppies where they were uh, trying to demonstrate the toothpaste and the toothbrush and they were describing uh, squeezing something onto a tube, but they didn't reveal what it was because it hadn't been revealed in the show. So uh, certainly that's something that you would want to consider for adults as well, but it's even more critical for children in like educational settings uh, context where you're trying to uh, teach them something and, and you don't want to um, give away the answer in advance. That's great. And we have um, a little less than two more minutes to go and a lot of questions coming in. Um, so Melissa writes, which type of reading voice is preferred? Screen readers are often hard for me because they read so fast. In the museum work I do, much of the discussion focuses on having a screen reader voice without interpretation, in quotes. But our visual audiences are getting some interpretation simply from the visual presentation. What are your thoughts on this, Sam? Yeah, I actually saw something about this the other day about how um, text to speech for people with disabilities is really falling behind uh, the voices that are being used in the mainstream for people. If you think about your your voice assistants um, and the the voices that they use uh, versus you know the robotic voice that you might hear coming out of a screen reader, um, they can be harder for people to understand without. Uh, lots of years of experience, um, especially at, at faster speeds. So it is certainly a, a training thing and it's a preference thing in terms of uh, what voices and, and speeds people prefer. Uh, certainly for less experienced uh, individuals, we would try to use uh, at natu more natural sounding voices and, and slower speeds where we can. Fantastic. Well, there are a few more questions, um, one from Carl and one from Anne. Another one just dropped from Anthony. So hopefully um, we can get those answers um, into the chat box for everyone. Um, but thank you, Sam, so much uh, for showing us how to navigate the web using a screen reader. That was really helpful. Thank you. Thanks for having me.